The Disrupt Education vlog can be found on YouTube. To hear it in podcast form, search Disrupt Education on any of the following podcast platforms. Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify, or Stitcher. Welcome to this episode of Disrupt Education. I'm Peter Hostrasser, the host, and thank you so much for listening in. Hey, if you get a chance, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate it. Give us any feedback. Five stars are always nice. Uh, I have got a friend, a colleague, a fellow business entrepreneur, entrepreneur, edupreneur. I'm just going to keep preneuring you up. Uh, (laughs) Michael Archbold is here with me today. Hey, Mike, how are you? I am doing Awesome, Peter. I am doing really good, and I am looking forward to diving into the the good stuff, the messy stuff, the tough stuff. <laughs> just uh, whatever you can throw at me, I am I am willing to tackle. And even if I don't know the answer, uh, I won't lie to you, and I'll tell you I don't know, and I'll find it out for you. That's why we've been hanging out for a while, man. That's uh, it's all good. Um, Tell a little bit about uh, who you are and what you're doing right now and uh, a little bit about your work past, man. Oh, man, I, <laughs> I've i got a long and interesting journey to become uh, an educator. I think I, uh, when I first graduated or when I was in college, I think I was, hey, I want to be a businessman, whatever a businessman meant, and graduated, worked, to show you my age, I worked at uh, Verizon Super Pages selling, you might not even know this, selling Yellow Page advertising. I sold bold links to plumbers, I sold half page color ads to attorneys, uh, you know, so that, that shows a little bit of my age. And then finally, Verizon got uh, I think it was like super pages, which was like online advertising, like web space. So that was kind of like a, a new thing that we were doing at the time, which, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to think that was a new thing in 2021, we would probably laugh and say that dude's super archaic, right? So I did that for a little bit, uh, recognizing that I was just not being fulfilled. So instead of doing that, I said, hey, let me go work in insurance. So I did some insurance. Recognizing I wasn't being fulfilled in that, I went and worked in collections. And then I then I just did a bunch of other, I would just call mess, to be quite honest mm-hmm. with you. Recognizing that I, I liked business. I enjoyed the inner workings of business. I, I understand, you know, movement, finances, HR, marketing, just all of it. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I necessarily enjoyed the quote-unquote corporate ladder movement so to speak and then i said you know what i love to talk i'm high energy i love people i love business maybe being a teacher is more of my my speed so i checked to see credits and all that good stuff went to roosevelt university got my uh teaching certification and then since then i have been a business educator for let's say the last 12 years and i think this is where the good lord wants me to be and i have enjoyed the last 12 years i don't enjoy the knuckleheaded kids sometimes but i i thoroughly enjoy being an educator and all that it needs right so even when we talk about uh you know curriculum i enjoy that stuff but i think my my biggest heart and biggest passion is just really connecting and working with kids and, and helping them. And I, you know, it's funny because a lot of the business educators I hang out with, we've all done things before we came into the classroom, which I think is a plus. So I'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to ask you, what kind of student were you? Like, what kind of student was Mike back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I tell my students all the time, I was like a, I was a strong C student, man. I was, I was, I was a solid C guy. Every once in a while, I throw you a bone in gym and, and pop out like an A, you know, I pop an A in gym, but I was like a strong C, strong C student. Every once in a while, I may throw a, a D in there, but uh, I was middle of the road, just didn't necessarily, you know, it wasn't an interest. I just, it, you know, just didn't 
didn't see the value in it, I guess, to be honest with you. So going back into that, let's dig up a little bit of Mike's past here. Here we go. Uh, what uh, what were some things that, that you would have done differently or you you are doing differently now in the classroom that you saw yourself like, you know what, I'm not, I wasn't that student. It, it's it's interesting that you asked that because I, I, I think the question's kind of like twofold, right? So what I, what I liked when I was in high school, I never forget Miss Smith. She was a sociology teacher. I, I probably had her one year, but I just remember her as being cool. And I remember all the kids really liking her, right? So I think, so that's what I enjoyed. I think what I, what I would have liked more is more teachers connecting with me on a personal level and, and not so much curriculum although i recognize as an educator like hey i'm a personal finance teacher i need to teach you about personal finance right i can't just you know come out man let's hang out let's just talk <laughs> about like the football game and food and and you know what we're doing on the weekend all those those things are like super important and i think we need to connect with our students on that level i i, I think they're you know and i don't know if we'll get into it or if it's just my personal take is I think curriculum is so like it's it's important and we need to get through it and we need to talk about the subject. But sometimes that's it's not I don't believe it's the end all of Mm -hmm. everything. Right. Like it's we're teachers, so we need to teach. But I, I think sometimes, as I've told my students, my job is to give you the tool belt. Right. I'm going to give you a tool belt because I repeat myself. I talk a ton. I'm super high energy at like 730 in the morning. Um, But I'm going to give you something to put in your tool belt as long as you're with me, whether it's a semester or a year. Your job is to take it and then decide what are the the mess I've told you for a whole semester you're going to pull out and use. Right. You're not going to use everything. But maybe there's this one like, man, Archibald did say. I should make sure I keep track of my hours when I work. Okay, cool. If that's the only thing you get from our conversations for a semester, I will count that as success. And I always tell them, send me an email. Maybe you never, you forget me. Just send me an email. I'll be like, Archibald, you told me about keeping track. And my boss said he didn't give me the hours. And I knew I was, that's, to me, that's the important thing, right? Like, so I, I think all that to say, more a, a deeper personal connection for me because I think I'm a, a very emotional being and I think connecting more with me would have maybe had an effect so I try the best that I can especially in this virtual world it's really tough yeah. but I I am trying to be more aware of 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 connecting and not just like hammer home, like curriculum, curriculum, curriculum. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, what really brought me like to you was your energy. Like I think as, as an educator, if you don't bring it every day as much as you can, it's really tough. Right. So I'm not going to come at you with, you know, good morning class. How are you guys doing? You know, you, 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 I mean, and maybe that works for some, but for, for me, that's what really attracted me to like how you just go after things. And, you know, knowing your background a little bit now, you were in collections. So, you know, (laughs) that some of these kids might end up there and you're trying to tell them about what that's like. So how do you take, how are you taking, cause you had a lot of experience. I had a lot of experience before we jumped into business education, man. What are, what are some of the, like the main stories or the greatest parts that you're like, look, this is what happened when I was here. This is what you need to know. Do you have any of those moments that, that come to mind? Going through, there's so many things to talk about. Cause I'm, I'm thinking currently now about my, my incubator mm-hmm. section that I have, right? Yeah. And, and just this past uh, Friday, I had a young man, he's in the team, and, and I know it, and I was just waiting for him to bring it up, but he said, Mr. Archbold, he's like, I'm going to be real with you. And I was like, please do. My teammate ain't holding his weight. Uh, look, you told us to do this thing today, and he didn't do it because he thinks I'm going to do it. And I'm not trying to throw him underneath the bus, but and, – and I started thinking about the times where I struggled in the past and struggle current present tense with 
being in teams where everybody may not be necessarily handling their weight, right? So I, I, I tried to put it I, I tried to put it in, in in context that one, do I give this kid an out saying, Hey, let me drop you from your group, let me pair you up with somebody else, but now you and the person I pair you with, one of you are gonna have to give up your product that you've been working on since August. Or do I tell you to kind of stick it out and figure it out? And the one thing that I've learned is when it doesn't always happen, but when when you do what you're supposed to do and you are and you put your name on it, there's a sense of pride that that you get from doing that. And the other person has to deal with whatever they're dealing with, right? Like we can't always control the outside factors of whether my partner is going to do his or her share or or whether they're going to take credit for it but when it really comes down to it it's teaching teaching those skills that hey do what you're supposed to do and 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 be confident at so what i what i told him was i said look on monday what i'm going to do is make a generalized kind of statement to the class hey class i need everybody because there's another group that's kind of dealing with some of the same issues hey class let's make sure we're all kind of holding our weight we don't want you know give them kind of the the rah rah pitch (laughs) and then and then i told him i said let's do this i'm going to give them a week right give them a week and let's see if that if that does some type of spark and then if it doesn't then i will step in because again i don't want it to be like a whole nother month where i'm like hey you know for the last four weeks you haven't done anything well it's (laughs) like i'm giving you an opportunity giving him a chance to step up um and i told him i was like don't quit don't you just keep doing what you're supposed to do and i recognized it already i was just waiting for him to come and say something because i knew i knew his partner wasn't doing what he was supposed to be right but i wanted him to approach me because again i've learned uh especially in the incubator is it, it's you right you said something about like life lessons and, mm-hmm. and things like that right yeah that's a life skill man like i can't i can't there isn't a a lesson that i can come up with that's going to teach the kid a life scale of dealing with a difficult teammate there is no there's no <laughs> lesson that i'm going to google to come up with dealing with a difficult teammate it's not going to happen he's going to have to develop that I hope I tried to give them like, hey, man, a little encouragement, a little peace. Keep doing your thing. So that way, hey, the next time maybe he recalls something that I said to him and that he can continue on. So uh, I, I think dealing with especially it just happened, you know, 48 hours ago, <laughs> dealing with the difficult teammate is is tough. Right. It's even tough for me at 43 dealing with colleagues who may not necessarily be you know, as motivated as you and like, well, what do I do? Do I just say, forget it. And like, don't do it. Do I say, do it, but then get stressed out. Do you, do you know what I mean? How do you, how do you handle that? And it's tough for me at 43. So I can only imagine for a 16 year old kid who's in the class that he may or may not necessarily want to be in, in the first place. Right. How does, how does he deal with, that situation so you, you, that was a long long response to your question no that's true though but it brings up the the point of experiential learning versus checkbox learning right so you're right you can't really find i mean that somebody will try to sell you a curriculum and say hey you know this is your teammate stuff and you can list all <laughs> these things but you have to experience it and i think that's why we love what we do as business educators it's a love-hate relationship it's very difficult um but so um you know when you see these students, um, and we always do, we never get 100%. That's the goal, right? But you never get 100%. And you're working with the youth, and, and you know, you're like, I'm providing you with experiences. And then you call them knucklehead kids, but they're just not doing it, right? How do we, you know, I think that's our biggest challenge, man. What, what, what do you say about like, you know, bringing experiences over checkbox learning? And then, cause our kids know, some of them know they can just check the box. Like, you, you know, you and I actually in high school, I checked the box, you know, How I checked the box. Yeah. Right. I still check boxes now sometimes to be quite honest <laughs> with you, right? Like when the laziness, if, if we're being real, yeah. right? Like, am I a hundred percent into everything that I'm doing? 
if I'm doing some reflective self reflection, no. Right. I, I I know I need to, right? But I, I think maybe what you're getting like, what do you do? I think the goal as you stated is a hundred percent. Right. Mm-hmm. We I, I I say that my boat's big enough for everyone, but everyone's not gonna fit. Mm-hmm. Right? My boat's big enough for everybody. Like, hey, I I can I can take on all thirty of you, right? I can I can I can help and get to each one of you. Every one of you is not going to be helped because mm-hmm. some of you just don't want it. And I think sometimes, um, you know, tough 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 subject for administrators. I believe I want everyone to get it. Everyone's not, and and sometimes, and maybe it's it's self. You know, I put it on myself sometimes in that we I can't feel bad that everybody's not getting it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think I think personally for me, sometimes I felt bad or I felt a certain way because like, man, I really tried because then you see those stories where it's like, oh, Mrs. So-and-so reached reach Johnny who never came to school and like now Johnny's going to school and he's going to Harvard and you know he's bec- and it's like man like bro I just wanted you to do this budget real quick and like, I couldn't get, get to do that so like why, why, why is my student not going to Harvard or Yale you know so I, I, I think just recognizing look if if I give a hundred percent every single day when I for right now, when I click on my Google Meet and I give a hundred percent, I gotta walk away walk away with that pretty fired up. Mm-hmm. If I go in there and I give them a, a, a half a effort and I give them like a sixty percent, and they're not getting it, then that's that's an on me thing. And and then I gotta question myself. Well, why didn't I give them a hundred percent? What's um? And you mentioned administration, and I think it, I've been in like different schools, and, and you've seen a lot of different things, like the pressures of you know hey you know get get uh, what yeah right like what's happening here you you have to do this and you're not doing that but you're given a hundred percent um how do we find that line man how do how do we especially when we're like now we're you know we're in hybrid you know we're trying to figure out you know trying to reach kids and they're not even physically in the building you know like peter i think what you know, I talked with our superintendent about the incubator program, right? And I told him some of the struggles that I was having and um, some of the successes that were, were going on. Um, I think it's it's a, a, a mind shift, right? I, I think, including myself, I need to continue to recognize what is the importance of what we are doing, right? It's and it goes back to the first thing we said, is it like straight, is it a hundred percent curriculum? Is it 90% curriculum and 10% life skills, so to speak, whatever that percentage is, but letting people know that we need to be real and authentic with whatever, right? So if you're real and authentic is 70, 30, live out your 70, 30. If it's 80, 20, if it's 90, whatever it is, but give our kids something that they can tangibly put in their tool belt. Again, no disrespect to my science, no disrespect to my English, no disrespect to my history teachers. They all teach things that are important to the, well, right, the liberal arts education, the whole whole child, so to speak, right? But for business educators, I take it personally, man. Like, because the things that we talk about, <clears throat> as any subject we talk about, it's applicable today. Not like, oh, you know, like when you become a homeowner, then you'll worry about money. No, <laughs> you'll worry about money now. You will you can create a budget with your $20 a week snow shoveling for your neighbor. You, you can learn how to calculate your taxes when you work today. You right, All those things can happen today. It's not a down the road thing that we are teaching. So however an English science teacher would do that, I think when we connect it, right, because Again, Mm -hmm. we started off and you asked me, you said, well, hey, what would you do differently? Relate to me more, bro. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me why, why this thing that you're telling me is important. My kids come home. Why do I need to know this? Multiplicate. Why do I need to know whatever that mess is that they're going over in math? Like, and I'm like, look, 
I can't tell you, to be quite honest with you, but I do know this. You better know how to add. You better know how to subtract. <laughs> you better know how to multiply, and you better know how to divide. Those are the four mathematical functions that I'm really good at. If you gave me an X over Y squared equals BC, I don't know. I'm lost, right? But there are some basic principles that kids need to know. And I think the more as a business educator, we can expose them that expose them to it, show them why they need it, show them examples of where it is applied. I share lots of personal examples like, yo, this is my budget. This is what we just talked about yesterday. Okay, maybe it, again, I want it to click with 100. It ain't going to click with 100. If it clicks with 60, 50, I'm okay because it clicked with somebody and somebody took something away from the interaction. And to me, that's that's the important. Uh, people learn math a lot quicker when they put a dollar sign around that number. <laughs> That's and what I would I joke, say. And I joke and I tell kids, I say, you know what? A couple things I don't like to mess around with my wife or my, my wife and family, food and money. Mm-hmm. Right. Those are three things that are really important to me. Right. I don't like messing around with my, my money. Cause I work pretty, I work hard for it. Right. Mm-hmm. I deal with knuckleheaded kids five days a week. Right. So when I get my money, I need to protect it and, and, and make it work for me, right? But right. The, the personal finance message that a lot of our students don't know is how to, how to utilize it, right? It's like, it's, it's important, I need it, I have to pay for my house and for kids and for sports and things, right? But how do we, how do we work with it, right? And not let it rule us. Compound interest, man, <laughs> compound interest. Pay yourself first. What do you, uh, what do you say, um, to the to the people out there, because I hear it all the time, and and I get really angry, and I do take this personally, and I shouldn't, because it's something I really can't control. But the people out there is like, man, our schools need to teach how to how to do savings and how to how to you know. But we are right. Like, what do you say to those folks? <laughs> well, I, I I tell them one, we we are currently doing that because I do that, and I think sometimes. Um, they're probably disconnected from education and educators, right? I think it's my understanding, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, in the state of Illinois, what is it? Consumer ed is a graduation requirement, yeah. right? You have to have it. Now, each school maybe does it a little differently, right? And even in our our district, we were doing um, part of it was in – what is it, government class or something mm-hmm. at one point in time? And I'm like, to be quite honest with you, it what we cover in a semester can't be covered in like three or four weeks. And realistically, personal finance should probably be a year long class if we're if we're being really, really honest. Yeah. Because there's so much to get through in whatever sixteen weeks a semester is that like sometimes it's like, man, we're rushing to get get that piece in because we it's like we're kind of deep dive, and if you deep dive, that means you're surface on some other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like so you're you're trying to balance, like man, this is like really important, not so important. This isn't really important, not so important. And it's like you 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 want to hit up, you want to deep dive everything, right? Mm-hmm. You want to go down and everything, and, and then come up at the end. But it's you you just gotta. You got to figure it out and, and do the best. Yeah, we do that. That's that's interesting. I like the fact that you're like, yeah, they probably are disconnected with education. It's it's an excuse or, or something like that. I know there's other states that do it um, <clears throat> as well. Um, so here's the big question, man. So we're we're in a pandemic. We got a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, we're in and out of the classroom. We, we've been doing this for, you know, double digit years. Um, what would you do? Say you're the guy. You're the guy who's gonna flick a switch and change one or two things in education. What would it be? I, I will I will say the I will give you the uh, what's the the big term experiential learning, right? So I'm mm-hmm. gonna throw that out there and say that's what I would do. And I'm looking looking at it through a a business lens. Mm-hmm. Our kids need to to have if you want to call them internships, partnerships, um, connected relationships, whatever it is, our kids need 
need to see their learning taking root outside of our classroom, right? I am not a personal financial planner, right? That's not my, that's not my certification. That's not what I do. That's not how I make a living, right? I'm not an insurance agent, right? I know about insurance. I know how it affects me. I know about it. I know the topics, right? Those aren't my, my lines of expertise. I use those things, right? Mm -hmm. But I would say for us as business educators, how can we, how can we, do it outside of just having, hey, your local insurance agent come in. Hey, come in my class and talk to my kids about homeowner's insurance. Well, kids, uh, homeowner's insurance, you need it to protect your assets, right? And then he or she leaves, and then we're moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So I I think, and again, going back to Incubator, I think Incubator intertwines all of that, and I think the more we can intertwine uh coaches mentors into our curriculum and intertwine into our subject i think that 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 one thing would be good and by intertwine i just don't mean again having somebody come in to give you uh a 60 minute lecture on on banking okay mm-hmm. cool but somehow kind of diving in and and figuring out what what can we do, right? Because, hey, we taught you about budgeting. I'm going to go put you with this financial planner, I don't know, once a week or something, and yeah. he or she is going to work with you on this. Or I'm going to, you know, I don't know if they could do it like in a bank setting, but I'm going to connect you with the banker, and they're going to sit down and show you and give you some. So something more so it's like they're hearing it, they're they're getting it, but then they're actually going to do it. And, again, you know what that looks like, or how that would be flushed out. Uh, I don't know if I have the answer. To, <laughs> have the answer to that, but I, I, I think, again, specifically for the business educators, and I think you could probably do it for science or history or any other subject, right? Mm-hmm. Seeing it in practice as compared to the, I don't even want to because I try not to lecture so much, but just that like dump dump of info into their heads, and then them getting it like getting it and then doing something with it or at least giving them the opportunity because again all 100 aren't going to want it all 100 aren't going to get it but it makes sure we we cast that net and say hey there's room for all of you some of you aren't going to fit underneath this net but we're going to cast and try to get as many of you uh roped in in our arms that we can 100 percent experiential learning um just saw a video from our district uh a young lady who uh, was graphic designing. She designed the dance uniforms and somebody from Lewis University came over and said, hey, can you design new ones for us? And they actually are going through that process, you know? So that's that's how that looks. Yeah, I don't know how you, you know, you got to rearrange schedules and do all these different things with that. But, uh, but that's, I think you yeah. also, but Peter, I think you've, you know, going back, I'm all over the place, but talking with my with the superintendent, and the thing is, it's the mindset, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to even you got to even want it before what I just said is even an option, right? Because right. if you're, and again, I'm still trying to shed some of that that paperweight, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, here's the here's the worksheet. Here's the worksheet. No freaking kid cares about the stinking worksheet, man. Like, they get enough. They don't care about the worksheet. So, one, us as the educators need to say, you know what? We don't want the worksheet. Since we don't want the worksheet, what do we want in place of what we thought was really good? Not that the worksheets are horrible in and of itself, but if we're going to replace it, let's replace it with an experience or let's replace it with something that's going to take root and not like, you know, I love Ed Puzzles, right? And let's just throw you the video. Well, what's the freaking video really doing, man? And again, I'm I'm pointing the finger at myself, right? Right, so right. Quick, boom, let's throw him an Ed Puzzle real quick. Okay, cool. It's a digitalized worksheet. Mm-hmm. It's a digitalized worksheet. So, but I, I think those conversations, man, like, and it's tough. And we got to... We got to investigate our own brain space. Like, why am I doing this? It's tough. I may need to do something that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, am I okay with doing that? Let me partner with some other people who are really don't want to do this, but think it's kind of cool, but don't know how to move forward. So let's try to do this in a cohort. But I think everybody is so, and especially now virtually, 
we're so isolated that we're just isolated. Right. And we, you know, I don't know what you're doing. So I'm just going to stay and do my thing because I'm just going to do my thing. <laughs> and another year goes by and you're in the exact same flipping spot than you were like the previous year and you're no better and the kids are no better off. Yeah, that mindset is everything and and creating the space and the time and guess what? You know, there might be those days where they don't look like what we're used to, right? Like in education and and it's just like the space and the time and you know, here's your tool belt and go. Um that is that's a scary place for a lot of people. I'll, I'll admit that's kind of scary for me too, but it's, it seems very interesting. You know, it seems, it, it can't, yeah. I don't know what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I can't see our educational system as it existed a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, I can't think that in a year from now it's going to look the same. Yeah. And I, I don't know what that change is going to be like because I look I look at our church, right? My church, we some people are in person, but some people like the online format. Right. And some people are more than likely going to stick with that online format, right? Right. And then they're going to bounce in for, you know, gatherings or something, and they're going to bounce back, and on Sunday mornings they're going to do that. I, I can't think – Right. And I could be wrong. Every kid in the fall isn't going to want to come back. Right. Right. Like there's going to be some percentage. It may be very, very small, but there's going to be some percentage of kids that don't want to come back. Now, whether the district is going to continue to offer that online format, that's a whole nother thing. Are kids going to want to go to different schools because they are offering those online formats? I I, I don't know the answer to those questions, but I I I. You know, it'd be interesting what what the fall looks like yeah. and what the options for students are going to, to look like in, you know, six months or whatever it is from now. Listen, Mike, it has been a pleasure. I always love having conversations with you, man. Um, thank you so much, man, for, for hanging out with us. If people want to connect with you, man, you're out on LinkedIn. Uh, where else can people connect with you, man? I am on Twitter at Archbold Educate. All right. That's Archbold Educate. Hey, appreciate your time and your expertise and how you're doing things. Uh, time will tell, man. We'll see what happens, right? Hey, I, I appreciate you because every time I talk to you, you, you always – share good nuggets of info you always challenge me and i never forget uh that one time you came to bpa right mm -hmm. and i can't remember i i said i wanted to try something and you were sitting down next to me and you looked at me and he's like are you scared is that why you're not doing it <laughs> and i was like man i felt some kind of way that you challenged me like that but i was like you're probably right i am scared and that's why i didn't do it so um, even, even if you don't know you're doing it, you are. And, and I appreciate it because it, it gets me, it gets me thinking and, and being a little bit more creative than I, than I would have if, if we didn't interact. Oh man. Likewise, this is right back at me, man. The things that you go through. So I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, man. And thank you all for listening. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Give us some feedback. Thanks for listening to Disrupt Education.